Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff, and this show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. With us today, Anna Oliveri. Anna is the president and CEO of the New York Women's Foundation. Let's all welcome Anna Oliveri. Anna, it is very nice to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Jean, for having me again, for inviting the foundation again, and thank you for your support. Indeed, your support has been terrific of the foundation. Um, so what are we? We are a public charity. We are a public foundation uh, that was founded by women for women. And that means that we bring women together we bring our hearts, our minds, our resources, and we invest in other women's lives, in our own lives and in other women's lives. So we work in the principle that when a woman does well, her family does well, and when families do well, communities do well. So we are a problem-solving oriented foundation that looks for women who are creating solutions to the very challenges that they are living. And what do we do? We re bring resources that are collectivized, you know, they are amassed from our donors and we invest in those solutions. And one of the greatest problems facing women today is poverty, correct? Right. When we read that poverty is in, has engulfed our entire nation because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, women are most affected and then children also. And can you talk a little bit about some of the solutions you have for women in poverty? Yes. So we did see, as you were saying, that the economic impact of COVID has been enormous in the country, in the city, in the state, it has been enormous. But it has had a particular devastating impact on women because of the sectors of the economy that have been most impacted. Traditionally, women are in what we call caregiving professions and are in the service professions. And those professions in tourism, in hotels, in restaurants, in um, maintenance and cleaning services have, have disappeared. Um, jobs that women have been holding have disappeared. So uh, that's why we see an enormous impact. And you are so correct when we have, when women lose their earnings, their income, their ability to sustain themselves, we are talking about children, we're talking about other members of the household also losing that. So it's very pivotal and very important that women be at the center, very much the center of the economic recovery. What are we doing about it? So in 2020, the foundation, who is a grant-making foundation, created an additional fund for an emergency response to COVID. The emergency response, the emergency impact. So through that fund, and we raised about almost a million point two, a million, a um, hundred and something thousand dollars, they were dispersed immediately to communities. So what were the needs that these dollars um, met? Food needs, rent assistance needs, emergency child care. Some of our grantee partners to make payroll so they could keep their staff. And that means keeping their families together as well. Some assistance to our partners that now were asked by families and by women and by other members of community for emergency services that they never had before. Access to healthcare. Um, many constituents, many communities in New York, as we know, losing family members and the destabilization for the rest of the family. So if a breadwinner you know, got sick with COVID or lost his or her job, the whole family got destabilized. So the foundation is now looking to be very active in the rebuilding of opportunities in New York City, economic opportunities. For women and families, which is so incredibly important. And Anna, when I look at the website and I've been involved again for many years, 
I, the, the two words that really come to mind are radical generosity, because you speak about radical generosity. What exactly is radical generosity? Is New York Women's Organization a radical organization? Or, or are these words to express the generosity of the women that get involved? Yes. So we are a radically generous organization and so are our donors. What do we mean by that? Yes, the word radical alone can have connotations that are not necessarily good connotations, but the origin of the word is really about roots. Radical comes from Latin and it means roots. So it's the generosity that goes to the roots of the needs and the problems. Is the generosity that responds above and beyond the average. So I just described the COVID fund. So we did the COVID fund with more gifts of our donors. So to us and to our grantee partners, they were radically generous. They had been always generous. You included, Jean, you contributed to the fund. So you gave additionally, you were radically philanthropic. You were radically generous. You were thinking of your fellow human beings in a way that went beyond what you had done before. So that's what we mean by that. We mean that generosity, the abundance, the, the giving to each other should not be bounded, you know, should respond to emergencies. Should, today, for instance, we have enormous food insecurity, enormous food insecurity of course, throughout the country and in New York as well. So what radical generosity is about is responding to that, is responding more than the average, more than the usual response, is that additional response. So that's what we talk about when we say radical generosity. So you're involved really in what's called impact giving, creating gifts for groups that need help at a moment when times are really tough as they are now for most yes. individuals. And for our audience, we are now with Anna Oliveri. She's president and CEO of the New York Women's Foundation, an organization that helps women who are struggling during now and, and during periods of difficulty. Anna, you have been involved as CEO and president for many, many years. I know it's over 10. And many women look up to you as a great leader, also for the equal rights movement. And in our country right now, uh, there are many, many women working on the Equal Rights Amendment. And many people can't believe that it's not part of our constitution. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing and what New York Women's Foundation is doing to propel this forward. Yes. So, um, first of all, thank you for your generosity, your radical generosity with me. But let me say what's so important. We think that it's so important that we have equality. We think that equality is a fundamental principle so that we're all treated with the same opportunities that we're all treated with the same respect and the same ability to thrive and succeed. So in that respect, the United States is behind so many other countries. So the Equal Rights Amendment is a very important thing. It's a constitutional amendment that will ensure equal treatment to women under the law. And that is a fundamental thing. So there are manifestations of the aspects that were not equal. We talk a lot about it. We all know about compensation disparities. That for the same job, the same qualifications, men and women, women make men, less than men. Women in general, 79 or to 81 cents on the dollar. Black women in the 60 something cents. Latina in the 50. 758 cents to the dollar. So that inequity, that inequality is very difficult to be addressed on a case by case basis. So the Equal Rights Amendment is a constitutional amendment that says women have the same rights and men's. Rights should not be based on gender, 
rights should be based on humanity, on being a human being. So the Equal Rights Amendment needs, like any constitutional amendment, needs to be ratified. And it has been ratified by the correct number of states. It has taken longer than we wanted, but it has been ratified. We are at a moment where we have um, a woman as a vice president, Vice President Harris, Kamala Harris. And we think it's an auspicious moment to, since the, the Equal Rights Amendment has been ratified by the needed number of states, it's an auspicious moment to move it to become part of our constitution. Yes, and hopefully Vice President Harris will help the Equal Rights Amendment move forward. And I know in our state, New York State, uh, that uh, is not part of the state's constitution, the Equal Rights Amendment. So we have a long way to go as women. And I remember my tenure on Wall Street, women were absolutely not paid the same as men. And it was very frustrating. And for many women, especially single head of households, women who have to raise and pay for everything for their family and not getting the same salary is a huge uh, problem and a, a great problem. So we need equality for women. We need equality for all people in our country. And now what are you doing or what is New York Women's Foundation doing right now to promote racial justice? Okay, so the foundation um, is really a foundation for everyone, a foundation for every woman. And we believe that we need to ensure that we all have, that all of our lives matter, that all of our lives are respected, that a lot of our lives are safe. So we know, and data shows us, that for instance, in the city, in the state, and in the country, the life outcomes, but in New York City, the life outcomes of, and you can do that throughout lifetime. You can do that when, in, at the girlhood stage, adolescence, adulthood, and older ages, that Black women, um, Latinas, tend to have much lower life outcomes, health outcomes, like infant mortality, maternal mortality is very high in the Black community. Um, health outcomes are much lower in Black and Latino communities compared to Caucasian communities. Educational outcomes, dropping out of school, unwanted early pregnancies that then can have so many other implications um, for um, women. So the foundation has been investing in women of color who are creating solutions to the needs that they have. We also like to uplift the voices of women of color that are seeking that equality, that dignity, their respect, that safety. So we fund um, organizations that are by, led by women of color, solving the problems and advocating for problems, solutions. We have, as you know, Jean, honored women of color who are incredible leaders from Dr. Lema Bowie, who was a Peace Nobel Prize winner for her work in Liberia, bringing about peaceful resolution to um, the founders of Black Lives Matter and the vision that they had that Black women needed to speak on their own behalf. And that believe that we all win. When we all matter, we all win. Now, Anna, one of the things that people love to hear about are actual examples of the work you do. For example, I know we have the Soup Red Kitchen and there are other groups. And can you give a couple of short examples? And then I wanna hear also about some of the names of the women involved with the organization, because I think it's very important. People connect to those that are involved. And when they hear, for example, that Gloria Steinem is involved and others like her, they also wanna get involved. Absolutely. So. What do we mean by problem solving, right? Funding solutions, funding um, opportunities for problem, for problems to, to, to not be always there, to be overcome. So the foundation has had a line of funding, has set of priorities 
And we're gonna be doing that again now as we look for the recovery in the city of investing in small business led by women, women who are entrepreneurs and who have their own businesses. We have great success because women entrepreneurs, by the way, and women of color entrepreneurs within small business is the fastest growing subgroup of small businesses. So we have invested in Hot Bread Kitchen before it was Hot Bread Kitchen today, which is a large organization that trains people, that supports entrepreneurship, and that you know, has products that it sells. Look for them in New York City. You can look for them in supermarkets, in Whole Foods, in Citarella, Hot Bread Kitchen. We have supported um, cooperatives, the Brightly Cooperative. Those are cooperatives of women who work in our homes, who clean our homes, who take care of our children. And through, through the cooperatives, and they have grown and grown, women that had very modest incomes or very unstable incomes now have stable incomes and are able to invest in them and in their children, which is really important, the generational impact. We have invested in Rock, New York. When 9-11 happened, the workers from Windows in the World, the restaurant that existed there, that survived, that actually were not working that day. They were not scheduled to work that morning. They realized that they needed to reconstitute a business for their own survival. So they created Restaurant Opportunity Center. Today, and we funded them, and um, that has provided them with the ability to support themselves. Today, ROC, Rock New York, is Rock USA and exists everywhere. We were in 2006, the first funder of Ijen Po, when she came to us and said, you know, we have a lot of domestic workers that need to be supported, that um, need, we need to have a bill of rights. So everybody's treated with dignity. It's good for the person who hires and it's good for the person who works. And the magic of the foundation gene is that in one of our breakfasts, we presented this. We said, all of us here who work as domestic workers and who hire domestic workers have an investment in having dignity, in knowing that we're treating people well and in people knowing that they're being treated well. So we needed everybody's support to pass the law in New York State. And we had everybody's support from both sides of the coin, so to speak the employer and the employee. And that is the kind of solution that the foundation wants to see. We have also funded and will continue to fund opportunities for women to get trained in technology because those jobs are better paying jobs. Those jobs allow mothers and caregivers in their homes to take care of themselves and others, to not be working full time and still be living in poverty. So we want women to get into science, into technology, into healthcare. So we fund training, computer training, we fund healthcare training, we fund opportunities for women to grow in the job market, to go from the minimum wage to more of a higher wage, from $15 an hour to 19, 20, 22, 23, which then means that their children and their family can be sustained and can the next generation is also going to start in a little better footing and rise out of poverty. So uh, the foundation, you know, is very lucky because it has donors like you. We have, we have two parts of our, of our success, our donors and our grantee partners, donor partners, grantee partners. And what do we do? We bring those universes together because we all want to see a city that works for all. You know, we all want to see a country that works for all. We all want to see solutions that are based on the generosity and that do win and win. So, you know, we think our economy is more resilient when families are more resilient. We think our economy is more resilient and it doesn't go through such ups and downs when we can sustain local solutions, you know, that people have created, that people are invested in. So we all become part of the solution. Yes. 
and no question when you help a woman and you lift her out of poverty and help her with job opportunities, you help the entire family. And then she becomes a great role model for her children as well. And if you want generation after generation to succeed, well, you have to help when help is needed. Now, you have a very big breakfast coming up on May 19th, the New York Women's Foundation breakfast. And unfortunately, I believe it's going to be virtual this year, but maybe next year we'll all reconvene at the New York Hilton. But Anna, it's such an exciting event and it's almost like a movement with 2000 women coming together. I want you to talk a little bit about the New York Women's Foundation breakfast and what it means and who comes together and what, what's that all about? That's really about women saying, we want action. We want to be helped. We, we want something now to happen, correct? Yes. Yeah. The breakfast is the flagship event the foundation is known by. You are so correct. It's a community gathering. Women of all walks of life come. 7.30 in the morning when we meet in person, right? And we're out of there by nine because we all have very busy lives. Now we're in a different world, so it's going to be a virtual breakfast, but it's going to have, be very special. We're going to have some pre-recorded parts of it, and we're going to have some live parts of the breakfast. We're actually going to give the awards, our famous walking stick awards, the, in, in a live way. We, uh, we are honorees. Who are they, G? They are women from our communities who have extraordinary transcendence and transformational stories of their lives. They're inspiring. They are part of our grantee partners. They are our grantee partners that on a daily basis throughout New York are creating solutions that we never heard of. And they are women, for instance, Lima Bowie that I mentioned, for instance, Gloria Steinem, for instance, Tarana Burke. So they are women who also have uh, a level of impact in the city, in the country, in the world, that they are role models for all of us. So yes, it is a woman-centered event where we come together, we witness each other, and we realize we are not alone. We are not alone. We have problems and we have solutions. Problems and solutions can be found in the same place. And everybody attending the breakfast you know, we have great support of our corporations and all the women that work in corporations. We, they know that, um, you know, we, we all share. As women, we all share so much. And attending the breakfast, and I'm going to invite everybody, it will be May 19th. We will send you an invitation and we, it will be virtual. So you'll be able to join from wherever you are. Um, you will have an opportunity to see what women can do together. And we want you to be part of that together because together we move towards better times, towards justice, towards equality. Together we do that. And you raise a lot of money at this breakfast. I think it's usually about $2 million, correct, yes. Anna? Yes. And then New York Women's Foundation, the budget's about 13 million every year. Is that correct? Yes, I think we are at 18 now. Fabulous. Our grant making is between nine and 10 million. And the, all the breakfast, the money that is raised in the breakfast goes directly out the door in grants, supporting our communities. Which is so important. And Anna, we have about one minute left. What advice would you give to our young viewers, to women who are struggling? What, what, what do you say to them? I would say, first of all, that you know you have enormous amount of strength. But second, and most important, that you are not alone. Engage, connect, certainly reach out to the foundation. Come join our virtual events. When we are in person, come join our activities. Um, we, we have the solutions. We have the challenge, but we have the solutions. And I want to emphasize the word together. I think with the pandemic, we have realized how important it is for us to know that we're not alone. Yes, and to support one another. And then also you have volunteer opportunities, which we'll hear about the next time, but anyone who wants to donate or to volunteer to New York Women's Foundation, Anna Oliveri, can you give the website? 
www.nywf.org. Thank you, Anna, for joining us today on Successful Philanthropy. You are always a welcome guest and someone who always offers so much because you do so much. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafroff, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.